What's up, guys? It's KB. Make sure you subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Click the bell icon down below so you don't miss a single video from us. And thanks for tuning in to another video from Underground Sports Philadelphia. Now let's get into it. All right, everybody, it is that time of year again. It's postseason time here on the Dan Russo Show presented by the Red and Gray Gridiron Group and Underground Sports Philadelphia. I'm your host, Kyle Bennett, and joining me is my co-host each and every week, the namesake of the show, head coach of Vineland High School Football, Dan Russo. Coach, how are you this week, and uh, how exciting is it? You know, postseason football is here now. Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks, Kyle. Um, yeah, it was it's pretty neat to know that um, the NJSIA did something new this year, and we're in that regional tournament. And um, we drew um, Eastern, and we get another home game, so we're the two seed. And um, I want to say, let's see here. So one had a buy, two. Yeah, they're the. Um, Three, correct? I think so. Well, wait, let me think. Yeah, because there's another bracket, right? So, um, Egg Harbor had a first round bye, so hopefully we can pull this win off Thursday because we'd love to play Egg Harbor again. Um, that was a good game for both programs, and, uh, you know, we're hoping to, uh, win Thursday to set up a rematch for the final week. But right now we're focused on Eastern, <clears throat> you know, good football team, similar to us. Tough schedule, not a great record. Um, they've had some tough games. I watch them on film. They have some, um, you know, talented players. I see their uh, quarterback. You know, he's thrown for uh, 547 yards and eight touchdowns. His name is uh, Logan Dawson. He's a sophomore, so similar to us with a sophomore quarterback. <clears throat> Got a big junior running back and Izzy Hernandez. 6'1", 225, and he's rushed for 372 yards and uh, three TDs. Uh, their other back is similar, three touchdowns, similar yardage. And um, Jordan Messino, so he's another sophomore, so they're pretty young as well. He's got 55 rushes for 361. Um, you know, they have some senior captains that are pretty impressive on film, starting with number three. You know, Jasad Kersey, he's a corner, wide receiver. Uh, Silas Davis, corner, running back, outside linebacker. Uh, seven, Jonathan Brennan, he's a, a running back, middle linebacker. He's actually a junior, 6'1", 205, so he's doing a nice job. And then they have one more who was impressive on film. Another captain leader they have is Aiden Clark with uh, 55 DN at 6'2". 240. So I've watched them on film. You know, they've battled. They're a couple plays away from beating a few other teams. Um, like I said, I was impressed with them. They got some good athletes. You know, Eastern High School has a good track record of success in that program. We've never played them in 10 years that I've been here. So it's a new game. It's, it's kind of neat to play a different opponent that we've never faced before since I've been here. Um, you know, it's in Voorhees, so you're going to have some kids that are um, very smart kids there, and um, they can process, you know, football and all that good stuff. Kid that stood out on tape too was 75. Uh, his last name's Rainey. He's a senior. He's like a nose guard, um, offensive tackle. I don't know if you've seen him, but they say six six three seventy on the max prep. I think he looks bigger than that. Wow. When they look big on film, when you're watching on a computer screen, I'm, they're enormous uh, live. So we got our work cut out for us. They're, you know, good team. We've got a lot of um, players in their program. And actually, when I printed their roster, because they're freshmen and JV are on here too, it's seven pages long with their coaches. It looks like the head coach is Lionel Bolin. Never met him. Looking forward to meeting him doing a nice job and um you know 
we're excited. Some teams opt out of this kind of thing. I guess the head coach has had enough. I don't know what the reasons are, but we're not opting out. We've um, signed the intent card to play as many games as possible. We could play up to three leading up to Thanksgiving, and I intend on playing all three, and uh, so are the kids. So, you know, it's a new season for us. A um, couple plays away in some of these games we've played. Unfortunately, the record's not great, but the kids have competed. I'm proud of them, and, uh, you know, we're sticking together and working hard. We're having good uh, participation here. You know, everybody's here participating in practice and film and weights and everything that we uh, require here. And, uh, you know, we're excited here. Yeah, and I mean, you know, we've talked about it earlier in the season and you know we're seeing it now with some of the professional teams around us you know most notably now the Phillies getting to the World Series in Major League Baseball but all you got to do is get in and you know you guys getting afforded that opportunity to get into this tournament it's a whole new season it doesn't matter really what you did in the regular season now because you can kind of wipe that slate clean and like you mentioned you're getting the opportunity to play at least three more games you're zero and zero going into this tournament and you can kind of, you know, just have your focus now on that opponent right now, which is Eastern and you have a, a new three game, you know, and if you want to count the, uh, the Thanksgiving game as well, a new four game season, essentially to kind of, you know, put a, put a new perspective on the 2022 season. And, you know, like you mentioned with Eastern, there are a couple plays away from, you know, beating some really good teams. I think this Vineland football team this year is a couple plays away from beating some really good teams as well. When you go through the schedule and if you were at the game, seeing how everything transpired and not just reading a box score, I think this opportunity now for this team in particular is going to uh, be very beneficial for the now for, you know, this current team. And then the guys that'll be back next year and beyond, I think this is a good opportunity for them to kind of, you know, learn about themselves and go into a new season and a postseason environment to learn how to win together. Yeah, agreed. And um, I was looking at the top 15 in uh, South Jersey that day. They had an updated, um, you know, number there. And um, you look at the list, all the teams that we've played, top 10, Holy Spirit's like three, Kingsway might be seven. Uh, Washington Township was like 12. Um, Oakcrest, believe it or not, they, you know they've turned things around. The guys doing a good job. They had some players, and they're six and two, maybe ranked twentieth or something like that. Maybe they, you know, they just had top fifteen. But I'm thinking they're close. And um, you know, we've had a tough schedule, but um, we're battle tested. Kids are battling, and um, you know, everything's positive here. Just trying to get better and you know, compete every week. Um, we've had some guys nicked up as a help, as you know. Um, you know, Tank with that hip flexor, he actually looked really good at practice today. He says he's 100%. So we've gradually brought him back. You know, we've missed him at corner and receiver. He's been limited in his, uh, his action because of that injury. He looks good. You know, Patrick Gilbert's back, one of our linemen. He got back uh, la late last week, but, you know, it's tough. Even if you get cleared, practice for three or four days and playing the game, so he's getting better. And each week we got Gallo back, which is great. Um, you know, so we're getting healthy and looking forward to this month of football. Uh, you know, we're almost out of October, and we have some games in November, so... The kids are excited, uh, motivated, and um, you know, looking to go out there and compete and show what they um, they can do. You know, I was looking at the film the other day too, and at one time offensively, it was nine of eleven of the kids were um, underclassmen. You know, only two seniors in with Julio Garcia and uh, Hitchens. So, you know, it's juniors and sophomores, so they're hanging in there and. Obviously, the seniors don't want to hear that about the future and all this. They're they're looking to win now, which we are too. But you know, looking at what is out there currently, you know, 
losing some of these close games and games that were in, that's kind of what you get with a young team. And, you know, they're getting better. So at this point, you know, the season, you know, we have a month left. It's kind of like these juniors are seniors now and these sophs are juniors. So they got to start playing like them and step up and help these seniors finish their careers out. So that's what we're looking to do. And even when you bring up, you know, two seniors, you know, on tape, realistically, James Hitchens is, you know, a, a – sophomore it's only a second year playing football so you know the experience level there he's got two years under his belt even though he's a senior and no doubt so you know looking at it overall you know kids are competing hanging in there and doing well especially with the schedule we have i mean even Williamstown had a similar schedule to us. They were able to knock off Kingsway early so they got a ton of power points but they're two and six and they're in the playoffs. And um, it's kind of crazy because some teams around here that I not not naming names are like six and two, maybe even seven and one, and one team didn't even get in, and one team's like the last seed. So at least they're equating your schedules, your strength of schedule, and the equation for playoffs in our regional tournament that we're in. Hundred percent. And you know, you bring up this new format now, and uh, you know, with you guys getting that opportunity to play in this tournament, you know, to kind of get that experience from a, a coaching perspective, how exciting is it for you guys as a staff to, you know, kind of dive into this new thing, be part of, you know, its first season being implemented and kind of learning how that process goes to, you know, get these, the, these teams for now. And, you know, in the future, if you, you know, end up playing in these again to kind of know how this whole format works. Yeah, I do like it. You know, every year is different the way the state formats things, you know, you get these early games and then they're letting you do these extra games before Thanksgiving. And, you know, you just got to stay on top of it because it gets complicated, you know, um, reading it sometimes, you don't fully understand it, what they're up to as far as, you know, seedings and tournaments and this and that. But, um, you know, I like what they did here with these regional tournaments. If you, you know, signed up for this intent card, it's called, you know, the school has to notify the state that they want to participate in something like this, which I'm always about because I want these kids playing as many games as possible. I don't, especially with us having a Thanksgiving Day game, we're going to sit around for three weeks and practice, you know, so you want to play games. The kids practice to play in the games and, you know, football, you have a game once a week which it's a long week, believe it or not, sometimes with the kids, the times it could drag. And, you know, if you have an extra week or two weeks off before a game, it's hard to keep the kids' interest, especially nowadays with the way these kids are with uh, cell phones, computers, iPads, uh, social media stuff. You know, they're always you know, looking for what's the latest thing, you know, and sometimes reviewing plays that we've done all year aren't the most interesting things for these kids to do, but doing our best to hold it down and keep the kids engaged. And um, you know, we've had a good week. We had a nice film session yesterday, which was Monday. And uh, today we had a nice practice, full pads out of uh, our practice field. Fortunately, it started raining pretty hard. I don't know if it was in the forecast or not, but I'm thinking we had rain the last couple of days and the field was dried out. It's playable, so we stayed here at the high school. And... Um, Starts pouring on us out there today, but the kids got through it. Um, probably ruined a few brand new footballs in the practice because they don't take water well, these leather footballs. And, uh, you know, we got through and got a nice practice in. So, uh, looking forward to getting another practice in tomorrow and playing Thursday night. Yeah, you know, on top of trying to keep the kids engaged and interested, like you said, that, that, Thanksgiving game means a lot to everybody from from both cities and you know to be sitting around waiting for that and it, it kind of just gets you out of a game mode and and not ready to be up to game speed and to be sitting around for multiple quote unquote bye weeks if you're not playing it's just going to you know potentially create more opportunities for injuries potentially opportunities for you know guys to just not be at their best from you know just sitting around for a few weeks yeah no doubt so we're all excited that we have these games scheduled on our, you know, for November and October here. And, you know, you got to keep the kids engaged and you got to, you know, they want to compete and they want to play in games. So 
we're excited um, playing a new opponent we're not that familiar with and they're not familiar with us like i said in 10 years we haven't played them because i've been here this is my 10th year and uh and we've never played them in football so looking forward to uh, the matchup against the uh, vikings here and you know to uh just put a ribbon on the regular season how was uh how were the homecoming festivities on saturday how did uh everything go down obviously not the result in the game that you wanted but what were some things that you guys picked up on you know from that game against Penn Saucon some things that you liked what you saw from the offense and defense and special teams that you want to keep that momentum going and some things that you know need some cleaning up and now that you mentioned you know you're getting a Gilbert back you're getting a Gallo back it kind of creates some depth along one of the most important units in the sport of football at any level on that offensive line but to get some of these guys back healthy now for the postseason is only going to help and, you know, create some more depth for you guys at, you know, key positions. Yeah, you know, that's a team I forgot to mention when I was talking about the top 15 in South Jersey. There's another one we played, Penn Salk, and they're like five or something. I don't know. They're high, too. They're undefeated 8-0. You know, really good football team, talented. But um, a couple plays away in that game as well, you know. Our game plan was to uh, – run the ball, power football, run clock. Um, they're very explosive in the passing game. And believe it or not, they kind of had the same mindset too. They had some success running the ball against us and they kept uh, running and, you know, they ran some power football as well. But what really hurt us was, um, you know, their first touchdown, we had our corner and our safety right there. And unfortunately, um, did knock the ball down. It was third and 14. We had him in a hole. And um, the two guys were exactly where they should have been. It's just um, unfortunate they didn't see the ball, and the the guy threw a great pass, and the kid made a great catch and ran for a touchdown, maybe forty yards or more. Um, but I tell these kids, it's gonna when you're playing this kind of competition, it's coming down to like three or four plays, and that was one of the major plays that hurt us there because I think it was um, fourteen seven at the half. We were down. And I won't even say we came back in the, se- in the second half, and it could have been tied at one point, 14-14, but it was a competitive game. You know, we were moving the ball. The offensive line is uh, doing a great job. I mean, the film was a joy to watch, seeing some of these pancake blocks that people don't really see live because they're watching the ball. But I get to watch. I'm fortunate enough to be able to watch a film multiple times. And I guess if people are watching the YouTube, the Violent Public Schools Network, they can watch – as much as they want to, but things I'm looking for is line play because, you know, without your line, you're nothing. And the offensive line is doing a great job. Um, you know, we have our center, Keyshawn uh, Chestnut. Chestnut family's had a lot of success here in Vineland playing football, and everybody knows that family. And Keyshawn had a great offseason in the weight room, and he's done like a 180, man. He's, uh, from his sophomore year to junior, what he's doing now. We actually witnessed our center making great snaps and then pancake blocking people. Uh, we got Gilbert back. He was playing, you know, some offensive line this week. Did a great job. Patrick's, you know, a junior. Uh, Chestnut's a junior. You know, and then our right. And then Julio Garcia is playing guard for us. He's doing a nice job. And then um, right tackle, Jordan Bennett. Trent kid and they're hanging in there for us, helping us out. And then left side with um, Alufemi Sode, a.k.a. Jerry, another junior basketball player. On film, he looks great. Darnell Herring, another junior doing great. Big kid, 6'4 almost, you know. Last year he was about 3'10". He slimmed down a little bit. He's 2'90". He's very athletic. He's getting around. I'm actually going to see if he wants to play basketball too this season because I think he can – help us with that size and athleticism. So the offensive line's done a great job. You know, they're big up front. You know, and then when you have a quarterback that's 200 pounds plus, it's not easy for defense to stop because it's a direct snap. We get extra blockers. And then, you know, when Dan's not getting the ball, you know, we got Charles Clark, you know, power runner doing a great job for us. And we have some guys in the passing game as well. So offense, offense did a better job. Um, I know one drive we had a holding call that hurt us. You know, those holding calls, 10 yards, you know, that they're, they're really, uh, 
tough to overcome. So that hurt us. And then one time, I think we had a nice play called, but um, Pensalk and grabbed our tight end, and Dan had to throw it away, and we got back uh, behind the sticks here a little bit, and it hurt us because we we're trying to run and then trying to get a first down on fourth. But you know, a couple plays here and there. We can win that game. You know, football, you look at the score and it says 32, 14, whatever. But realistically, it's 5 to 2 or 4 to 2, 3 to 2, things like that. You know, um, obviously in football with the six points and then the one point PAT and the two point conversion, if you get it, it looks worse than it is sometimes. But our kids, you know, played better. Um, we're getting healthy and they're getting more experience. And I like this group. Yeah, and I mean, I'm sure when we when it's all said and done at the end of the year with our, our season recap, I think the offensive line this year, in all the years we've been partnered with you guys doing this show, this has been one of the most consistent and just, you know, across the board, week by week, development-wise, that the offensive line has gotten better and better and kind of gelled as a unit almost from week zero on, and they've really communicated well they've really done a good job you know just progressing talent wise and progressing just you know improvement wise throughout this entire season and I think that's something that has really you know gone under the radar for the casual fan like you said is just following the ball but I think this offensive line has been all-star caliber for this team this year and should be recognized for how well that they have developed and played all season long yeah no doubt you know um I just was looking back. I'm in my office now, and I have a picture of an offensive line we had. And I don't know if I've ever mentioned it, but it, they're definitely by far the best offensive line we've had and tight end since I've been here. And, oh, by the way, the quarterback was Isaiah Pacheco, and the running back was Davon Seymour. So we were loaded for Bears. So we had a tight end with Naheem Anderson, left tackle, Noah Sance alone. Um, I want to say the left guard here. Left guard was um, Alateen Ardahan, big tough kid we had. He's actually Turkish, and um, he's real proud of that. Uh, Mike Bachma at center. Um, Ivan Hale at right guard, and then Timmy Jones at right tackle. And um, like I said, and then Naheem Anderson getting you the edge at tight end. So, you know, that was – by far the best offensive line we've had here as a unit since we've been here. But this group is showing signs of that group and potential, you know, for the future that they, they could be um, close if maybe not even better someday because, you know, with hard work in the weight room and now we have Newman at tight end, like Sean Newman stepped up, he, you know, he's, he's actually a little taller than Naheem was. Um, not as physical, but he's learning. Um, but might be a little more athletic in the passing game. But very similar. Naheem was just a little bit more of a badass. <laughs> he was. Yeah, he, uh, he, uh, he loved contact. Um, and he was a great player for us. But they're both very good, great players and great tight ends for us. And, um, Actually, both play the edge on defense, too. Naheem was our edge guy, mm -hmm. and so Newman. So very similar, these two. But like I said, Naheem was just a little little bit nastier. He he, um, he liked to mix it up a little bit. But, he was um, a junkyard dog. Yeah, man. We let him out once a week to play a football game out of the, <laughs> out of the room. <laughs> you know, and then uh, Sansloan, you know, he was physical as hell. Bachma, you know, to all those guys I mentioned, they were always uh, mixing up. But this group, you know, what I saw in film, you know, Patrick Gilbert pancaking people, Chestnut, you know, Jordan and Julio double teaming the guy, pushed them 10 years down the field. Uh, Sode and Herring, I mean, there's some big guys and they're strong and, and they're just going to get stronger with another year in the weight room. And, um, you know, we, we might just be that team next year and f finishing this year out that's a power football team and, you know, just running the football. Nothing wrong with that. It's high school football, and there's a lot of teams in the area that have a lot of success not uh, throwing much at all. So, 
we might be those guys as well. So offense is doing better. You know, defensively, we're, you know, moving some guys around, getting healthy. Like I said, having Tank out at corners was a big loss the last couple of weeks. You know, that hip flexor, but he's telling me he's 100%. We've gradually brought him back. Offensively, you can run. You know, one of my coaches made a good point. You know, him playing offense, he kind of knows what where he's running and what routes and where he's going to cut and what he's going to do as opposed to defense where you're tracking an offensive guy. And those sharp movements could re-injure that, that hip. So he has been limited on defense. Played a little offense last week. And, uh, you know, Ike Harbor, he didn't play much at all. He's battling through it. He's a tough kid. And um, like I said, we're getting healthy and we're getting better. Yeah, and I mean, you look at a time where you'd want to be getting healthier and time to be getting guys back and, you know, creating more depth along key positions it's this time of year you know if, if you know unfortunately injuries happen in a sport like football and you lose some guys throughout the year but if they're coming back healthy coming back stronger at this time of the year it's it's such a benefit for guys to be able to you know insert them back into the lineup or have them you know rotate in on a you know a pitch count type situation and really create more depth in those key positions like a defensive back, like an offensive line or a defensive line where, you know, you can win or lose games by having talent at those positions. Yeah, no doubt. And I'm, you know, as I'm talking to you here, I'm just drawing up defensively too. I didn't really do the numbers, but it looks like you know, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of the eleven starters and younger guys rotating in are sophs and juniors too. So defensively, you know, we're in the same boat. Um, actually, some of the seniors that even play underclassmen rotate in for them to keep them fresh. So you know, when you start calculating the numbers and seeing what we have here and who's playing, you know, it's kind of significant that these younger guys are playing, especially sophomores. I mean, that's. It's tough. You know, last year we had some of those guys. They were obviously freshmen, but now they're softs. And I'm looking here, and it's like I got one, two, three, four, four, four sophomores playing defense, you know. So that's pretty it's pretty remarkable as well because, um, you know, it's a progression. It takes time. You know, I can – I think I mentioned last week, I tell these guys just to stay focused and locked in, even with Pacheco and – Naheem and Sanson and that group, Bachma and Reyes, you know, they were um, three and seven, three and seven, eight and two, eight and two. So I've seen the progression. I see what it looks like. You know, last year, obviously, we had only two wins. You know, if we get four, five, six wins this year, that's it's an improvement. So that's, that's, it takes time, man. Absolutely. And, um, I tell these kids it's, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And um, keep your heads up and just keep battling, man. And, um, you know, we're close. We're knocking on the door here. And, you know, you also bring up, you know, the underclassmen that are, are starting for you. And this year, a bit of a new situation, too. There's some new voices on that coaching staff for the first time in a while. You know, having that kind of come in, and it may be a lot of similar plays, a lot of similar, you know, things coming across. But sometimes there's new terminology and new things that you have to pick up on. And, uh, you know, for guys that young to now be in a, a secondary regime, if you will, you know, new coaches and new voices for them to kind of learn from, that's also, you know, another thing that goes into the equation of trying to, you know, build such a young core together and, and keeping that cohesion. Yeah, no doubt. Obviously, you want to win every game as a coach, as a player, you know. Looking back here, we, we had some opportunities, but, you know, we're just not there yet, and um, we've had we have an opportunity now with this last month. We we've, we've gotten better. Um, we're looking to improve from last year and just build on that and just keep building. I tell these guys, you know, even some of those seniors and juniors that were on those three and seven teams that when Pop was a freshman and sophomore, they were always part of that progression. They're always part of the program, and. Um, you know, even though you move on and you, you can't suit up anymore, you're still part of the violent football program. And, you know, each generation, each um, alumni here wants the current guys to do well. And, um, 
you know, more close group and hopefully we can finish out strong here, which I feel we will. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you look at this game coming up now, kind of rare uh, circumstances as well with Thursday night football coming off a, a Saturday game. How has the preparation potentially changed for you guys with a, a short week, uh, you know, coming up here against Eastern? Has anything, you know, been a little bit more condensed, a little bit, you know, switched up because it is a Thursday night game rather than a typical Friday or Saturday game that, you know, everybody's accustomed to when playoff time comes around. Yeah, it's definitely condensed. You know, you find out Sunday, you know, who you're playing, the bracket and all that, and then you have to schedule your week. And, um, you know, JV had a game scheduled for Monday, and I didn't want to cancel that even though we could have used, you know, the JV here to help because they're usually our scout team. But they went and played Penn's Hawk and um, played tough, but, you know, weren't able to pull the win off, but able to play and get experience, which is a great thing. Um, also juggling a freshman game this week with a rematch with Ocean City Thursday. So Thursday they'll be at the Blitzfield over at Romano and we'll be at Catone um, playing Eastern. They'll have, we'll have two games going at once, so it's a lot of juggling. The flying week, you know, JV on a Monday, freshman on a Tuesday playing that team close by that wears orange. So they play actually that early. So we'll wait to play the varsity till Thanksgiving. But, um, you know, we have the uh, freshman JV next week. So freshman's going to have two games in less than a week, and they'll finish their season out, get ready for next year. We might pull a few kids up to JV. Um, and varsity help us with scout, see how those kids look and get ready for the future. But, um, yeah, definitely to answer your question, definitely a condensed week, playing on Thursday. At this point, you kind of are what you are. Playbook is the playbook. Both sides of the ball, special teams, all that kind of stuff. Just a few tweaks here and there. And um, our guys will be prepared and looking forward to the game. And like I said, it's a new opponent for, for me as the head coach being here 10 years. And, you know, Coach Guzman, who's been here 10 years with me. And um, like you said, some of the newer guys, you know, it's a new opponent. Um an opponent that's had a lot of success in their history. You know, even a guy I'm friends with, too, a good friend of mine, uh, Coach Spittle. He's at Rutgers now. He was uh, the head coach at Eastern for a lot of years. We still talk a lot. Um, he retired from teaching and uh, from high school coaching. Now he's, you know, on the Rutgers football staff. So his nickname's, believe it or not, is Coach Spit. So Coach Spittle and I have known each other, wow, for a while. Um, scouted some teams there at their venue, beautiful fields there. Um, I feel like every sports team there has their own artificial grass field, individual field. They don't share. Um, but then again, it's Voorhees. It's a little different than, um, some of these other towns and, that you, uh, play in, in, in our town too. Um, big money town and, uh, they have a great facility. So like I said, it's a, Big name program. Uh, Joe Flacco played for them. This guy's in the NFL. His brother, I want to say, played there as well. I think so. Um, and he's, um, I feel like he's still playing college football as well. But um, obviously everybody knows the Flacco name. So like I said, they have, they've had a lot of success. Um, looking forward to meeting the coach and um, playing tough game Thursday. And when you have such a condensed week like this, and you know we talk about it every week that you guys are at home, how beneficial is it knowing that this game is a home game? You get to use that world-class facility. You get to play on a turf that you're familiar with, and you'll have that uh, that raucous, you know, Vineland High School fighting clan crowd, marching band, cheerleaders all behind you ready to explode at any given moment. Yeah, the cheerleaders will be there. Unfortunately, I guess the band... Um, had some things scheduled. I'm, I'm not, I don't think they're going to be there. Um, they didn't know I think the exact date, even though they know we play these games these three weeks before Thanksgiving. But um, I guess they got to do some type of rehearsal. And, um, you know, it is what it is. They have a competition they got to get ready for. But um, it'll be the cheerleaders, the football team. 
you know, maybe a little bit of a smaller crowd because I don't know how many people really know that we're playing Thursday, but we put out there on social media. Hopefully they listen to the podcast too. And um, they'll be there at 6 o'clock on uh, Thursday night. I know some of the youth football program, programs practice. And they have playoffs as well, so I'm not sure if they can even break off and go to our games. But guess what? It is what it is. We're looking to win the game and continue in this tournament. And um, – the focus right now is on Eastern and, you know, the coaches and the, the players are preparing. Um, everything's positive. You know, I got really good guys and, you know, we've never been a program with, you know, with the coaches here being negative and beating the kids up. We're always positive and just trying to fix things and compete. So that's why we have good numbers. That's why we have kids coming back. That's why, you know, our kids like playing here because, um, you know, I don't permit any negativity. And, um, you know, if someone doesn't like what we do, we'll shake their hands and wish them the best and they can go somewhere else. Run a clean program. Um, make sure I get the right guys in here, um, meaning coaches and players. And um, you know, at the end of the day, we're doing the best we can here. And, you know, it's a Thursday night game and, the track record for uh, the guys at the pro level on Thursday nights has not been a great product so far this year, Coach. So I think this game on Thursday night might be the better product to go out and watch or watch on the uh, the YouTube broadcast. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I know one of your questions will be what we're going to wear. We're going to do another blackout. So the blackout unis are ready that. to go. And um, the kids are excited. They love those jerseys. And, um, you know. We're all about team here, but they like to have a little individuality, I should say, here. And they like their names on the back, and they're proud of their names and, you know, where they're from and the heritage of what their last name brings. Um, so it's a good thing. I like I like it, you know. Um, custom graphics in town hooks us up with those. Those jerseys get worn once maybe twice a year last year we couldn't wear them because believe it or not there was no vinyl like i mentioned so they're in great shape they're like brand new um a nice storage area here where we store them but uh you know i tr i pack them up bring them over to custom they hook them up with the last names and uh kids love them so they'll be sporting them out on uh thursday during school they're allowed to wear violent high school gear even though we have a uniform policy here, so they're allowed to wear their uniforms, uh, meaning their jerseys. And, um, you know, hopefully we create some excitement and, you know, the students go support the team and go out and watch because um, there's only so many trips to Cumberland Mall you can go to, right? Yeah. <laughs> that place closes earlier and earlier, too, so it's yeah. a better opportunity to go out and watch the boys play and I'm sure, uh, you know, I brought up Thursday Night Football. I was looking at who was playing this week. I think Dan might have a better opportunity to outperform his favorite quarterback with the way Tom Brady's been playing this year. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a group effort. He's got some things going on. But, um, you know, there's a way to fix it. He will. That guy's um, going to get that nickname, the GOAT, for, it, for any other reason than being the GOAT. And, um it's just remarkable that he's playing. I mean, I'm 47. He's 45. I can't imagine being out there even 40 doing – forget 40, 38. That guy's – he's uh, it's definitely a freak of nature. Uh, yeah. He's uh, – I don't know what the heck he does, but he's key, he's, uh, he's holding it down and doesn't seem like he feels like retiring. Matter of fact, he's – I guess he's getting divorced over it. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Well, I, my guess is if he's going to get divorced, he's going to. He doesn't intend on retiring this year either. So maybe we get another five years of Tom Brady. Yeah, it's nuts. He'll be playing when he's fifty. And well, uh, I think he needs some help, though. You know, he lost the center. You start losing guys. It's it's not hard to replace that, especially that center. They had an all-pro center. I, I'm going blank with his name, but um, I think Ryan Jensen is his name. Yeah, he's re he was really good, and you know, a center usually on offensive lines making all the calls knows the offense. You know, that guy was nasty. He brought a different edge to that that line. So 
you know, you just can't, you know, it's tough. You know, replace them with guys that are inexperienced. So and they lost their head coach. You know, they got a new guy in there with Todd Bowles, who's a good, you know, great coordinator. But I guess his track record as a head coach is is still out there. He, he didn't have much success with the Jets, but um, yeah, we'll see. It's a marathon, not a sprint. They got a lot of games left. And hey, we don't have uh, James Hitchens Jr. signing autographs for referees like Mike Evans was. <laughs> That was different. Yeah, apparently uh, the the referee went to high school or college with Mike Evans, and he was writing his phone number down for him. I don't uh, know if I buy it, but <laughs> pretty suspicious yeah. activity there from Mike Evans and those refs. Yeah, well, it didn't help him out. They lost to the Panthers, so yeah. I guess you can't <laughs> say they showed favoritism because they lost to a team that had one win, right? And just fired their coach. Yeah. And just traded their best player, arguably. Well, that's yeah, you can't make the sh- you can't make the stuff up. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Um, but going into this matchup against Eastern coach, what are some things that you know you feel like you guys do really well against what this Eastern team presents on both sides of the ball that you're you're really looking to uh, hopefully execute on Thursday night and you know walk away with a a win come Thursday going into a, a potential second playoff game against a, a familiar opponent? Well, you know, like I said, they, they got some good athletes. They're well coached, and uh, it's not going to be an easy game. So, you know, we got to stick to what we're doing. we got to eliminate mistakes. We had a, too many mistakes last week. One drive alone, Penn Talk, and, you know, you play a team like that that's one of the best in South Jersey, and, you, know, you give them four yards and penalties on on one drive, and they ended up scoring on with a uh, face mask, uh, personal foul for ripping a helmet off. You know, jumping off sides twice. It's just it's not it's just not going to work. So we might have had eight to ten penalties last game. So you know, we're telling the kids, you know, you got to eliminate these mistakes. We're doing our best to coach them up and tell them you know not to do these things. Even sometimes when they're jumping off sides, we're yelling, all the coaches yelling out, watch the ball. Unfortunately, sometimes things happen. Sometimes that's what you get with a young team and some young players. So we're just trying to uh, correct the mistakes, get better, go out there and compete. Like I said, it's not going to be an easy game. Um, They've got some guys, you know. So I think the team that wins on third down offensively and defensively, you know, minimizes the mistakes and um, plays disciplined football is going to win the game. It's going to be an exciting one. We'll give you all the details of uh, when and where to watch the game later on in the show, but we always wrap up with our alumni and uh, coach this week. I got the old Facebook memory popping up from 2017 where uh, Finland High School football was mentioned on Monday Night Football on ESPN when you guys had your opportunity to hang out with Monday Night Football. And uh, it's crazy to think that that was, you know, five years ago now. Yeah, wow. It was, um, yeah, we got to hang out with Coach Gruden and uh, treat us to a nice meal at PDQs, which I never even heard of until I went, you know, there and met Coach Gruden, the Monday Night Football cast. And uh, they had great times. It was, it was neat to see um, – you know, Coach Bruin at the time who was the announcer mentioned violent football by name, and I think he mentioned Pacheco as well. He did say to watch out for Isaiah Pacheco. And I'm sure if he was still the coach of the Raiders, they would have grabbed him because he would never <laughs> who he was. And um, it's a kind of small world now that you know, Coach Bruin's not there anymore. Coach Ash is there who actually recruited um, Pacheco to go to Rutgers. So it's amazing how um, – Every year things change, especially at the professional and um, college level. You know, I've told my guys plenty of times and people in the community I talk to about football and they ask about the college you know, process. It's like we have a ton of guys coming in here and I know the faces and the names usually, but the hats change. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's very competitive, cutthroat business. And um, these coaches, you know, they put a lot of time in, and um, 
they want to be compensated. So these college coaches and um, pro coaches, they've worked hard to um, be the best coaches in the country, and you know they want to be compensated. And, and if you do your job well, people want you. I mean, I saw something where that Matt Rule, who I've had conversations with and conference calls, and you know, Jeremiah Toki went to Temple when Coach Rule was there. You know, he gets let go, and um, he's getting nine hundred grand for four and a half years. I mean, what? I mean, you, you just that's crazy. That's incredible. Four nine hundred thousand dollars a month for four and a half years. They own over forty million. <clears throat> so, you know, wish I knew now. I wish I knew then what I know now. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. I don't even know what I would do with 900 grand a month. I know. I'm sure I know I some things I would do, but like to have that, just you know, here you go, direct deposit, almost, you know, a million dollars a month is is crazy to just think about. Even watching the Dolphins, coach, was it? Let me think when I was watching the Dolphins, and the Steelers, is it uh, Sunday night, right? Yeah. I mean, that guy, he was a grad assistant, just kept working hard, videographer. But that's the projection, man. You just keep doing whatever it takes to get to that spot. And, you know, if you latch on to a good coach, I feel like he was under, don't tell me. Oh, he was under Shanahan. Yeah, and when he left the Washington and they went to San Fran. Yeah, he was with the dad originally, though, as like a videographer mm-hmm. or something they were saying. So Coach Shanahan Sr. and his son and this guy and I'm sure a bunch of others. They had McVay there. They had yeah. uh, LaFleur, who's with the Packers, was yeah, there. Yeah. And uh, I want to say there was one other guy, too, that it was like that whole crop. And then Washington chose Jay Gruden <laughs> to be their coach instead yeah. of any of these young guys. And then they all dispersed everywhere and – now they're all head coaches pretty much across the league. It's pretty amazing. So, you know, the coaching trees of um, Belichick, Shanahan, even Parcells still with some of these guys, and Coughlin, Andy Reid. Andy Reid, pretty amazing. Oh, yeah, the other guy that was in Washington was uh, the Vikings coach now, uh, Kevin O'Connell. Yeah. He was part of that crew too, those just young, brilliant coaches that are now head coaches in the nfl and how about these head coaches former head coaches they're on the chief staff now they got matt navy they got um hold on the dc spagnola he was with andy reed and the eagles and he was the head coach of the um giants Mm -hmm. right yeah pretty cool i'd like that gig just be a sidekick be nice just be part of the Avengers, not not actually Captain America. <laughs> and then uh, this week, Coach, we got the, the breaking news from Ian Rappaport about 7 a.m. on Sunday that uh, the Chiefs, speaking of, were making a change at running back. And uh, Isaiah Pacheco named the starter for this past week uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. And... Had himself quite a game. Almost broke off a, a kick return for a touchdown. Had 43 yards rushing on offense. And uh, that that name, Isaiah Pacheco, just continues to uh, climb up the ranks of everybody's ears in the NFL. Yeah, it's amazing sitting there in my house watching him play on, on TV for the Chiefs. It's, uh, you know, I'm like speechless. It's great to see he's... Um, special kid absolutely deserved and uh you know i think he did enough this past week to really grab the reins of that job and continue to be that rb1 and you know one game isn't gonna give you enough of a chance to see what he's truly capable of but i think he did more than enough to to really prove to andy Reid and that entire offensive coaching staff that he has what it takes to be a starting running back in the nfl you know, doubt he has the measurables. Plus, you know, he's so positive and um, everyone feeds off his energy. And he's similar to a Kelsey and a Mahomes and the way they act. 
and players feed off of that. So coaches see who brings the juice. And, um, you know, you could see their passion. You could see Mahomes' passion and Kelsey and, and Pacheco. You know, I mean, they're just always encouraging their teammates, you know, and kid and, you know, players feed off one another and they feed off that positive energy. And, you know, when you look at some of the great teams, they're all talented, but when they all buy in and, and like I said, feed off one, one another's energy and, you know, challenge your teammates to do better and win games, it's what it's all about. 100%. And, you know, another guy who has kind of that instinct in him, uh, Tyreen Powell and Rutgers, they, they got back on the good foot, coach, and they got a big win this past week uh, against Indiana, winning 24-17 to at home. Uh, you know, kind of breaking a, a mini losing streak there for Rutgers and, you know, turning some things around there against a, a tough opponent in Indiana. Yeah, no doubt. Anytime you have a Big Ten win, you know, it's, it's a great win for them. Um, they got a tough schedule as well. and They're new in the Big Ten, relatively new, and um, they're just going to keep getting better. Coach Yano's the right guy, as I've said multiple times. If, if he can't get it done, nobody can. So if they if he can't get it done in the Big Ten with Coach Yano, they should just go down to a different league. So um, I'm confident he's going to get it done, and surround himself with the right people and he's going to get the right players because you know he's the guy the jersey guy and um, high energy guy and he's got football chops he knows what he's doing so yeah, it was great to see them win i want to say they've got minnesota this week right yeah that'd be a great win they need to get a couple more here so it's got to keep you know keep building and um we're going against some big time programs that have a huge uh, history of success. So hopefully they can keep getting better and keep these Jersey kids in Jersey. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, that long list, that, that Vineland roster of alumni that we have uh, continue to play well down the stretch here for their respective seasons, whether it's at Alvernia, Monmouth, uh, you know, we, we got almost every New Jersey school <laughs> on the books with how many guys are, you know, elevating from the Vineland High School football program to then go on to college uh, in Jersey, Pennsylvania, you know, across the board we got. We're, we're touching a bunch of states now, Coach, and it's pretty cool to see. Yeah, you know, our kids are buying in, and the biggest thing they're doing is the academic piece. It's highly competitive, and um, some of these schools that our guys have gone to, the Gettysburgs, Donovan Bennett, Fuck now with Noah Sands alone and you know, Mammoth with Dutra. They're not easy to get into. College of New Jersey with Braylon Blakely. I mean, Anthony Arthur at Wagner. Obviously our guys at Rutgers, like we you know, discussed. It's it's not easy getting in, so I know we had um I'm going blank with the name. Unfortunately, but he was here. I want to say a year or two before I got here. I know we had a kid go to Columbia, so I'm trying to get some kids, you know, some Ivy. Terrell Douglas. Okay, Terrell, that you got it. He was a great player here, I know, and um, he actually went to the Ivy League school with Columbia. So it'd be nice to get some kids in some Ivy Leagues as well. Hundred percent. You know, last year we had, uh, you know, Emmanuel getting that invite to to Harvard, which was pretty exciting. And, you know, yeah. I think the Ivy League schools now that, uh, you know, it's getting back to normal for their schedule too. Obviously, they've operated the past couple of years on a much different schedule than most of, you know, college athletics. So them getting back to normal and, uh, you know, being able to, to play full schedules again is only going to help them, you know, start to recruit more and, and bring guys in knowing that they're going to be able to play. Yeah, no doubt. I was watching Princeton and uh, Harvard the other night, matter of fact, and what a hell of a game. You know, coach Sharice's son is the head coach at Princeton. Um, he's doing a great job, and they really put it to Harvard. I think they both might have been undefeated at the time. So we've got a couple kids here, I think, that are Ivy League material with uh, Tyrell Powell and um, our quarterback here with Daniel. 
Um, their grades are off the charts. You know, you got to be over 4.0 and have the right um, academic uh, classes. So, man, if we could get a kid into an Ivy League, that'd be something special. We've had kids in the Patriot League and things like that. But, you know, Terry Douglas is the last one I can think of. But you know, I know that, you know, my son's looking to go possibly in Ivy League and he likes Princeton and you know, we visited there. We haven't been to a football game yet, but the campus is very nice and they play a good brand of football. And um, we'll see what the future brings for these guys. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. You know, the season continues Thursday night at Catone Stadium, 7 p.m. kickoff, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and it'll be on the Vineland Public Schools YouTube channel. So make you, make sure you subscribe over there. You can click that bell icon on YouTube as well. They'll send you a notification uh, when new videos and new live streams are ready to go live so you don't miss out on the broadcast. Or, you know, it's home. Come on out to Gatone Stadium and support the Fighting Clan on Thursday night. Myself and Rich Scarpa will be up in the booth calling the game for everybody at home. And uh, make sure you guys are following along with Vineland Football on social media at Vineland FB on Twitter, the Red and Gray Gridiron Group Facebook page, and you can follow Underground Sports Philadelphia on Twitter at Underground PHI. And make sure you subscribe to the podcast feed so you don't miss an episode episode of the Dan Russo Show. Just search Underground Sports Philadelphia on your podcast app of choice, and you can watch the show live along with us. It premieres the night before every single game. Uh, on the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe over there and uh, tell everybody that's where you can watch the Dan Russo show each and every week on YouTube. But Coach, looking forward to Thursday night, looking forward to a new opponent, and hopefully next week we'll be talking about a big violent high school football win going into a, a possible rematch with an opponent we saw earlier this year. Yeah, well, that's the plan, you know. Starts with um, Eastern. Focuses on Eastern right now. Like I said, um, anytime you're playing in Group Five and playing the schedule we do, it, there's no, there's no easy game. So we got to make sure we um, work hard here and prepare mentally and physically, and you know, get ready for this opponent and um, get back on the winning side of things here. So for Coach Russo, I'm Kyle Bennett. This has been another edition of the Dan Russo Show presented by the Red and Gray Gridiron Group and Underground Sports Philadelphia. 7 o'clock, Gatone Stadium will be the place to be on Thursday night. Hopefully we'll see you out there, and hopefully we will see you all here next week. Actually, hold on one sec. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. Okay, there we go. We'll see you there on time too, Kyle. 6 o'clock. Absolutely. I was looking at both websites. I looked at Max Preps, and I looked at uh, – What's it, Where does it say 7? NJ.com and Max Preps yesterday when I looked said seven. So, all right, I'll fix it right now. I'll take a look at it. So six Thanks o'clock. Everybody. Everybody. Six yeah. o'clock. Yeah, we're gonna do the early game. Um, get everybody home a little bit earlier. So yeah, six o'clock kickoff. There we go. Six o'clock Thursday, Gatone Stadium or the Vineland Public Schools YouTube channel uh, are the two ways to uh, catch the game. And next week. We'll see you guys here on the Dan Russo Show presented by the Red and Gray Gridiron Group and Underground Sports.